Hello, the Dormier Du X was the largest, heaviest, and most powerful flying boat in the world when it was produced by the Dornier Company of Germany in 1929. With a wingspan of 157 feet 48 meters and length of 130 feet 40 meters, the Du X was powered by 12 engines and carried 169 passengers. First conceived by Claude Dornier in 1924, planning started in late 1925 and after over 240,000 work hours it was completed in June 1929. The Du X was a semi-cantilever monoplane and had an all duralumin hull, with wings composed of a steel-reinforced duralumin framework covered in heavy linen fabric, covered with aluminum paint. It was initially powered by 12 391 kW 524 HP Siemens-built Bristol Jupiter radial engines in tandem push-pull configuration mountings, with six tractor propellers and six pushers mounted on six strut-mounted nacelles above the wing. The nacelles were joined by an auxiliary wing to stabilize the mountings. The air-cooled Jupiter engines were prone to overheating and could barely lift the Du-X to an altitude of 425 m 1394 Ford. The engines were managed by a flight engineer who controlled the 12 throttles and monitored the 12 sets of gauges. The pilot would relay a request to the engineer to adjust the power setting, in a manner similar to the system used on maritime vessels, using an engine order telegraph. Many aspects of the aircraft echoed nautical arrangements of the time, including the flight deck, which bore a strong resemblance to the bridge of a vessel. After completing 103 flights in 1930, the Du-X was refitted with 455 kW 610 HP Curtis V1570 Conqueror water-cooled V12 engines. Only then was it able to reach the altitude of 500 M1600 FT necessary to cross the Atlantic. Dornier designed the flying boat to carry 66 passengers on long-distance flights or 100 passengers on short flights. The luxurious passenger accommodation approached the standards of transatlantic liners. There were three decks. On the main deck was a smoking room with its own wet bar, a dining salon, and seating for the 66 passengers which could also be converted to sleeping berths for night flights. After the passenger spaces was an all-electric galley, lavatories, and cargo hold. The cockpit, navigational office, engine control, and radio rooms were on the upper deck. The lower deck held fuel tanks and nine watertight compartments, only seven of which were needed to provide full flotation. Three do excess were constructed in total. The original operated by Dornier, and two other machines based on orders from Italy. The X-12, named Umberto Manelner registered Iridi, and X-3, named Alessandro Guidoni registered Iaban. The Italian variants were slightly larger and used a different powerplant and engine mounts. The Flugskiff flying ship, as it was called, was launched for its first test flight on 12 July 1929, with a crew of 14. To satisfy skeptics, on its 70th test flight on 21 October there were 169 on board of which 150 were passengers mostly production workers and their families, and a few journalists, 10 were aircrew and 9 were stowaways. The flight set a new world record for the number of people carried on a single flight, a record that would stand for 20 years. After a takeoff run of 50 seconds the Du-X slowly climbed to an altitude of 200 m 664 Passengers were asked to crowd together on one side or the other to help make turns. It flew for 40 minutes. To introduce the airliner to the potential United States market the Du-X took off from Friedrichshafen, Germany, on 3 November 1930, under the command of Friedrich Christiansen for a transatlantic test flight to New York. The route took the Du-X to the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, France, Spain, and Portugal. The journey was interrupted at Lisbon on 29 November when a tarpaulin made contact with a hot exhaust pipe and started a fire that consumed most of the left wing. After sitting in Lisbon Harbor for six weeks while new parts were fabricated and the damage repaired, the flying boat continued with several further mishaps and delays along the western coast of Africa and by 5 June 1931 had reached the islands of Cape Verde, from which it crossed the ocean to Natal in Brazil. The flight continued north via San Juan to the United States, reaching New York on 27 August 1931, almost 10 months after departing Friedrichshafen. The Du-X and crew spent the next nine months there as its engines were overhauled, and thousands of sightseers made the trip to Glen Curtis Airport now LaGuardia for sightseeing tours. The Great Depression dashed Dornier's marketing plans for the Du-X, and it departed from New York on 21 May 1932 via Newfoundland and the Azores to Muggelsee, Berlin where it arrived on 24 May and was met by a cheering crowd of 200,000. 
The Do X2 entered service in August 1931, and the X3 followed in May 1932. Both were initially based at the seaplane station at La Spezia, on the Ligurian Sea, and reassigned to various other bases during their service. Both orders originated with SANA, then the Italian State Airline, but were requisitioned and used by the Italian Air Force primarily for prestige flights and public spectacles. Subscribe to the channel and rate the video in the comments, as well as other interesting videos I have on my channel.